While cleaning up my guest room for the holidays, I noticed that my side lamp was not working. The light didn't come on. It's actually broken. So today I want to show you how I was able to replace that old lamp by making my own crystal pendant golden cage light. And I was able to make this elegant sparkling light shade for about $8 using all dollar store pieces. Now since I wanted something different for my guest room this time, I thought a nice pendant light might be interesting. And these are some of the pieces that I really like. Some crystal pieces, really elegant. And you know how I love bling. Then I remembered at the beginning of spring, I found these gold baskets at Dollar Tree. I was so excited because I knew I could make something beautiful out of this. And I thought, this is perfect. I can make a cage pendant light. So I'd like to do something that's a combination of the two, a cage crystal pendant light. This one is really beautiful. I love it. And I like these because they look a lot like my basket and they have lots of crystals. So I have the basket, I have lots of crystals and lots of supplies. Let's see what I can come up with. For this project, I'm using two gold wire baskets, seven and a half by five inches, two rows of colorful diamond mesh ribbon, two bags of acrylic gemstones, one magnetic tin container, and gold wire. All these pieces you can find at Dollar Tree. The tools I'm using are long nose pliers, optional round nose pliers and wire cutters, X-Acto knife. I'm also using Gorilla Clear Grip Glue and the hot glue gun with Gorilla Glue Sticks. Okay, so to make the shade for my light, I'm gonna start with these two gold baskets. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that there's an opening at the top and an opening at the bottom. Since I'm making a pendant light, the bottom I'll be using for the top, but the, the top part that I'm using is closed up with this wire frame. So I need to open that up so that I could put my light and fixtures through it. So I'm gonna use my long nose pliers to open up this rectangle shape at, right at the top and to do that I'm going to put the pliers right on the edge where I want to cut the wire and just sort of gently wiggle it back and forth until the wire snaps and you don't have to bend it a lot just some quick back and forth motions and it should break wherever the edge of your pliers are like this so I'm just going to go around and break the rest of the remaining wire pieces inside that top rectangle shape. Okay, so now I have an opening for my fixtures. So these baskets are about five inches high by seven and a half inches around. A little too small for a fixture, so I wanna put two of them together. It'll give me a nice round shape but I do need the bottom to be open so that I could put a light through. So what I wanna do is cut off the bottom part of the second basket so that it is a nice wide opening. So I'll be cutting the wires on this piece right below the second bar. So now I have my bottom piece and when I put these two pieces together, I have a nice shape for a pendant. So I'm gonna attach these two pieces right now using gold wire. This is gold copper wire that I already had, it's 20 gauge, but Dollar Tree also has gold wire. It's gold floral wire and it's about 26 gauge. You could use that for this also. So I'm gonna cut 14 pieces of this wire, about three or four inches each. So I'm gonna put my two pieces of the cage together and I wanna make sure all the rows are lined up. So I'm gonna put a piece of open tape right here. I don't wanna close it up because it'll be hard to take it off, but uh, just to keep it in place while I take my wire and I'm gonna push it in behind the bars 
and I'm going to move it up to it's about a third. Uh, there's about a third left at the bottom. And then I'm going to bend that bottom piece of wire up and over to the right and take the piece behind it, the longer piece, and bend that down and over to the left. Then I'll wrap that bottom piece back and around the bottom bar, then coming out towards the right, and I'm going to bring that up and over to the left. And then I'm going to push those two wires at the top behind the top bar and then twist those two pieces together. If you want, you can use the pliers to make it tighter. Then you want to cut the end off pretty close. Um, I'm using wire cutters here, but you could probably use scissors to cut this. And then I want to curl the ends of the uh, wire under. I use my round nose pliers for this. This is also um, some jewelry making tools, but you could use the uh, long nose pliers to do this. But I'm going to just curl it inward. And then I'm going to take my long nose pliers and just flatten it. I'm going to push the wires together so that they're flush against the cage. Also in the front, I want to squeeze those wires together so that they look a little bit better. And you can go around and do the same thing for each connecting bar, or you could just do maybe four of them, one across and the two on the sides. I think that should be sufficient to keep them together. But I decided to do it on each bar, and I put on gloves because the bottom part of this is kind of sticky. Um, you might want to file down the edges of the piece where you cut the bars. Also, the wires that I cut are might be a little better at four inches for twisting. So you might want to cut the pieces four inches instead of three. Okay, so now I have my cage lampshade base. And it's a really nice shape. I like it. I have the top opening and I have the bottom opening so that I can insert a light. Now for the fixtures, you can use a pendant. Um, that you have already. I did order one that was in bronze just to match this piece. I ordered this one on Amazon and it was $16.99 for a 16 foot cord. And this is the kind that you can plug into the wall, hang from the ceiling. It also, um, you can get this in black for about $12. Now, of course, I need something to attach the fixture to. So I decided to use the top of this magnetic canister I got from Dollar Tree. It's just about the right size, but it has a hard, clear top um, covering that I could cut into. And what I want to do is attach this to my metal shade. But first, I want to cut a hole in it that is just exactly the size of the head of my fixture. I'm going to use a pen to draw right around the edge of that fixture piece. And then I'll use my X-Acto knife to cut that hole out. And do this very slowly and carefully so you won't slip and cut yourself and just turn and go all the way around until the circle pops up. Okay, now let's see if we can fit it inside. It's very snug, which is good. I can almost screw it on. So I'm gonna push this all the way down to the end. And this is how the fixture piece will sit in at the top. The attachment piece will screw in down here, keeping them both together. Okay, so now that I know that that should work, let me take this apart so I can glue this piece to the top of the shade. Now, if you wanted to spray paint this gold before you attach it, you could do that. I'm just going to leave it silver. I think it'll work with the piece that we have. So to attach this, I'm going to place my cap right side up 
and I'm going to place the cage right on top of it centered and what I want to do is I'm going to use hot glue with Gorilla Glue Sticks and put glue right across the body edge. This is where I think the wires will fall. And I'm going to sit that on top of the glue and make sure that the wire is definitely on that surface. And then I'm going to sandwich it with glue. So I'm putting glue at the bottom and at the top of the bar. And this will help to seal those pieces in. Also, I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks, which is a bit stronger than the regular glue sticks. I think this will work fine to keep it sealed in. Normally, I would use E6000 or the um, Gorilla Clear Grip Glue but I need this to solidify quickly. So I'm just gonna use a lot of this um, Gorilla Glue Stick. And I think this will give it a strong enough hold. Now it's not very pretty, but I don't think you'll be able to see the insides too well. So let's put the pieces on. And yeah, it's not noticeable. And I think I may cover up the sides with gems, but this is really nice. I really like this just naked cage look. I may just replace my kitchen pendants with these. I really like this. So you could stop here if you want and you can have your own nice gold cage pendant lights for just $3. Or if you want, you can use the same cage as a floor lamp shade. Walmart has a simple floor lamp in gold for just $10. I found these nice Edison light bulbs. They're LED. I think it'll look really nice, go well with this fixture, and it'll keep everything cool, which is great because the bulb will not get very hot at all, and that'll be perfect because I want to use acrylic crystals to cover this shade. I'll leave a link to the light bulbs where you can get this online. So let's start doing that now. Let's cover this with crystals and make it a little more elegant. On this pendant, I want the wire cage to show, but I want it to be covered in crystals. So I think I'll put a strand of crystals right in the center of each wire row. So it'll feel more like this piece. Now this crystal strand, I'm not going to use, but I wanted to show you this. This is really beautiful. I found this on Amazon and it has these gold clips in between. And I think something like this will be really perfect for this. These strands are about seven inches and will just fit to the bottom of this piece. And it costs about $18, $19 for 20 strands. And I'll leave a link to um, where you can get these if you want to buy them. But I'm not going to use these uh, since this is a Dollar Tree project. I'm going to show you how you can make something similar to this for just a few dollars. Now the crystal strand that I like is made out of glass. And Dollar Tree does have glass gems that you could buy a bag of. But, and they're about the same size. But the gems are not faceted like the crystal piece. Uh, Dollar Tree also has these faceted diamond gems that are acrylic that look more like the crystals. They're a bit bigger, but they do sparkle more like the crystals. So I think I'm going to use those gems. Also, a while back I saw this diamond mesh ribbon uh, and I picked up a bunch of them because I thought they would make beautiful um, something, beautiful jewelry. So I actually have quite a few rows of these and I think this will be perfect for making my own strands of crystals with golden links. So I'm gonna take this whole row of ribbon and I'm gonna cut one strand. I'm gonna cut just the gold part out as one long gold strand 
And then from that long strand, I'm going to cut 14 pieces that are 10 inches long. So each strand will have exactly 24 little round gems in it like this. And for the 14 strands, you'll need about one and a half rows of the ribbon. So next I'm going to cut the strand up into three gems each. So these will be the links between each crystal. And I'll have eight pieces of this strand with three little um, gems each. And here's how I'm going to link the crystals to the strand. I'm looking for one of the faceted lines and I want to actually glue one of the pieces from the strand to the bottom of the facet line. So I'm going to put a little hot glue right on that line right at the bottom. Take one of my links and put it right at the bottom. I want to line the bottom up with the bottom of the gem. And it's going to fit right in between this triangle. And then I'm going to follow that same line down across on the other side. And that's where I want to glue the other part of my link. Right at the bottom. A little dab of glue and another link lined up directly across. Make sure it's straight and it lines up with the bottom of the crystal. And then I'll take my next crystal and I'm going to glue it the same way. Find that straight line on the crystal, any one of them. Put a little dab of glue right at the bottom and then I'm going to attach that bottom part of the strand right to the bottom part of the line on the crystal. Now if you decide to use the glass gems, you will have to use the Gorilla Clear Grip Glue or E6000 instead of the hot glue. The hot glue won't stick as permanently to glass, but since these are all acrylic pieces, they should stick pretty permanently with the hot glue. And this is what my acrylic crystal strand looks like compared to the real piece. And I want those few strands at the top so that I can attach it to the cage here. So when I glue um, the crystals, they're going to go downward. I'm leaving the three strands at the top. And um, this is a lot longer, so it's going to hang below the cage. And I think I'm going to add another crystal right at the bottom. But look at it compared to the real glass crystals. I think it's a pretty good substitute. So I'm going to have to make 14 of these to go around the cage and um, the spaces, the rows going around the cage. I'm going to glue that last crystal at the bottom. So that's just going to be attached by that one link. So each crystal strand will have three little gem pieces at the top, part of the strand attached to the cage with eight crystals for each strand. And this is about 10 inches long, the entire strand. Now I did all 14 pieces, but just in case you can't find that colored mesh gem ribbon, the gold one. I'm doing one strand with just a diamond wrap ribbon just to show you what it would look like. So I'm doing it pretty much the same way but I'm um, cutting about four diamonds per strand. While you're doing this also make sure you're pulling all those little hot glue webs off. So this is what that will look like with a strand of diamond wrap which is pretty nice. I like that. Look at that, even against a gold cage, it looks beautiful. Just a diamond and crystals. But for this project, I'm using the gold and crystals. So we'll use this diamond one for another project. Okay, so to attach these strands to the cage, I'm going to center it in between the rows. I'm going to put hot glue on that second circle from the top. And I want to make sure the hot glue is pretty 
close to the top of that circle so that it touches the bar and then I'm going to bend the first circle over and press it hold it together with the second circle to close it and I'm going to hold it together for just a few seconds I'll do the same for the row on the other side of that top circle piece for the center strand since I don't have access to that bar because of the top piece I'm going to glue the first link right on to the silver top piece and let that hang down in the center of that row by the way um, plastic stick into metal doesn't stick as well with hot glue so you might want to use a little um, Gorilla Clear Grip Glue along with the hot glue to attach that. Plastic to plastic with hot glue works really well, but hot glue on metal and glass uh, doesn't work as well. So as I'm gluing these strands, I'm pretty much alternating. So the middle piece is on the top metal piece and then the next piece is on the bar. This side piece will also go on the metal piece at the top and I'll glue all the other pieces all the way around in the center of each bar. To keep the pieces in place in the center of the bar I'm going to put a little drop of hot glue right on that middle piece and stick it to the center so that it doesn't shift when it's moving. So each strand I think will be draped on the outside with the bottom part tucked into the bottom part of the cage. I also decided to make one more strand and glue that right at the top where that uh, metal piece is just to hide that and to finish it off. So I'm using the Gorilla Clear Grip glue since I'm gluing this to the metal and I'm going to glue the, the gem pieces right over the strands. And it should line up pretty much perfectly as I go around. Just have to cut the last couple of strands at the end. And now I think I'm finished decorating. So I'm going to hang this up and turn on the light just to see what it looks like. And with the light on I could see all the little strands of hot glue webs I call them webs that I want to pick out I want to make sure the strands are clean so um, just go around it and make sure you pull out all the strands and I I use the tweezers sometime to get into places I can't really um, get in with my fingers and I thought just to make this interesting I'm going to go around to every other strand and cut the bottom crystal off to give it a nice design. So I'm cutting the bottom link and crystal off of every other piece alternating. And I think I really like that. It looks more like a chandelier pendant. Very lovely. Now I think it's time to replace that old lamp and hang this in my guest bedroom. The fixture kit came with some hooks, a long 16 feet cord. Um, so I hung this from the ceiling right over the table next to the bed. And I put the switch on the table so the light could be turned on and off easily. And I gotta tell you, this LED Edison bulb is awesome. After burning for a couple of hours, I can totally still touch it. It is just a tiny bit warm to the touch, so I don't have to worry about this affecting my acrylic gems at all. This is actually the room where my mother sleeps when she stays. It has her bed, it has a sort of vintage look, so I think this light is perfect in here. I think she'll really like it. And now that I see how great this one turned out, I'm off to make another one for the other side. Now this lampshade that I made cost about $8 to make. With the fixture, it cost about $25 for the whole project. 
And even if you were to use the real crystals that I showed you in the beginning, it will still cost you a lot less to make this. And compared to the ones that I like, which were hundreds of dollars, I think it's a pretty good substitute. So you all have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Want more detailed instructions on some of these projects? On my Etsy store, for just a few dollars, you can get instant digital downloads of full color step-by-step -step instructions with templates for some of your favorite projects. And check out my Amazon page where you can pick up my multi-surface acrylic metallic paint back in stock with eight beautiful shimmering colors. You can mix millions of colors and create endless home beauty for indoor and outdoor projects. And while you're there, pick up my Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1. With all your favorite projects together in one big beautiful colored step-by-step -step instruction book. You can now get separate e-project booklets and also full color printed project booklets will be available on Amazon. On my Amazon page, you'll see all my favorite crafting tools and supplies used on this show and you can add them all to your cart for the one click fast and easy shopping and delivery convenience of Amazon. I'll be working every day to make crafting fun and easy for you. Follow me at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV on all social media for extra home, food, and gardening tips.